Hey YouTube, this is New 2 in 1 and I'm coming to you regarding the Rihanna 2020 interview with Diane Sawyer. Um, and this is just in regards to a lot of the comments that are posted uh, below this video and the other videos that follow, you know, in like part 2, 3, and 4, and 5. Um, it's really directed to the comments posted by young ladies that I've read here and on other internet sources like blogs, like Media Takeout and Concrete Loop. And I just wanted to uh, address uh, their response to Rihanna's interview. I'm seeing a lot of comments saying that, you know, Rihanna must have done something to provoke Chris Brown and that in the interview she's lying when she says that she did nothing. And uh, therefore, if she did something to provoke him, then she deserved the beating that she got. And, uh, you know, she has a violent history and things like that. So the first thing is that Rihanna must have done something to provoke Chris Brown, and she's lying. Uh, if you notice, in the police report, which, you know, Diane Sawyer read word for word during the interview, uh, it basically detailed the horrific abuse that Rihanna suffered at the hands of Chris Brown on that night. And mainly that he beat her in the face, he bit her, he caused her mouth to fill up with blood, um, he put her in a chokehold twice, um, and then he left her on the side of the road uh, because she was screaming for help. Uh, and then the police report was used during the trial. It wasn't really a trial, it was more of like a sentencing hearing because uh, Chris Brown pled guilty. And I'm a law student, so this is, you know, I'm a third year law student. That means I'm almost done. I work in a court, you know, I have my own clients and things like that. This is just my limited knowledge. And, you know, you can take for it whatever you will. When someone goes to plead guilty to a crime, there are facts that are stipulated to the crime. Facts of a crime come from the investigation. The investigation is drawn from the police report. The police report said, Chris Brown did A, B, C, and X, Y, and Z to Rihanna. Then they used those facts to come up with a charge to charge the defendant. He was charged with, I think, domestic battery or abuse or something like that. And they use the charges and then they tell you, do you plead guilty or not guilty? He pled guilty. When you plead guilty to a crime, the facts that they use to charge you for the crime are what you also plead guilty to. Chris Brown has a very high-powered attorney, and the attorney, I'm certain, let him know that. Therefore, when Chris Brown pled guilty to assault and battery or whatever it was, he pled guilty to also punching her in the face, to biting her, to putting her in a chokehold, and, you know, to restricting her ability to breathe and, you know, all those things like that. Also in the police report, Rihanna reported that there were two other incidents previously where he pushed her into a wall and where uh, he bashed in the windows of an SUV. So when he pled guilty, he said, in effect, legally, yes, I did these things. You know, those things are, are included in the report. I also did these things. He could have said, yes, I did these things, but, you know, she hit me first. She abused me first. She was abusive to me. She provoked me. He didn't. He just said, because she read some text messages and she got upset, I beat her in the face. The next thing I see a lot of young ladies saying is, you know, well, um, you know, since she provoked him, she deserved it. Well, I already said, you know, I don't think that she provoked him. And another thing about her provoking him, Chris Brown had plenty of opportunities to turn around and say, Rihanna... Uh, provoked me, Rihanna hit me, Rihanna abused me, and he never said that. During the Larry King interview, he actually said, no, she didn't hit me, she didn't do anything to deserve that. And then he released a statement right before her interview saying, I think that these things should remain private. But he never clarified and said, but just so you know, she hit me first. Then on top of that, he had an interview with Sway where he on MTV where he never said that she hit him first. And she, he had an interview with, uh, I think, Angie Martinez or something about his fan appreciation tour where he never said that she hit him first. He's had plenty of opportunity to explain what happened. And he's never said that Rihanna's hit him first. And he never stipulated to that when he was being sentenced. He was sentenced under the facts of, because she read some text messages I didn't want her to read, I beat the crap out of her. 
ladies, I'm telling you right now, your lives are precious and no one has the right to put their hands on you. Don't get me wrong. No woman has the right to put her hands on a man. No human being has the right to abuse another human being. And if you put your hands on your boyfriend or your husband, then you are being the abuser. But he doesn't then have the right to turn around and eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, beat you up. And, you know, what I say is that, you know, she didn't hit him because if she did, he would have said so and he wouldn't have pled guilty. But, you know, even if she did hit him, he didn't have the right to beat her to a bloody pulp and leave her on the side of the road. He had no right to do that. No man has the right to put their hands on you. A king is supposed to protect his queen. A king never, ever hurts his queen. He protects her from all harm. And a man is supposed to be the king of his castle. But if a man cannot protect his queen, he is not a man. And if a man puts his hands on you, he is not a man. And he does not deserve the support and love that you give him. Now, I think what a lot of this is coming from is the fact that Chris Brown, before all of this, is a very likable and talented young man. He has such a squeaky clean image. And I remember just after the VMAs and before the Grammy Awards, I was riding in the car with my boyfriend and a Chris Brown song came on. And, you know, my boyfriend's an older guy, you know, and he's not really into the whole pop music thing. But he said, you know, I really like Chris Brown because it's so nice to see a young man with a nice future who has a good image, you know, isn't, you know, calling girls every single name out of the book. He seems so respectful and so talented and to work so hard for what he has. And I said, yeah, you know, that's what I really like about Chris Brown, too. You know, I'm not really into, uh, you know pop R&B music myself, but I really like his image. I really like what he stands for, you know, and then he turned around and did this. So I can understand the cognitive disconnect that young ladies may have. How could this great guy, you know, who is everything that I would want to have in a boyfriend, do something like that to this girl for no reason? She must have done something to deserve it, you know, or she must be lying. She can't possibly be telling the truth. Young ladies, no man has the right to put their hands on you. And if you were dating a guy and he was the most popular guy in high school or college or at your job and everyone knew him and liked him and your family knew him and liked him and he put his hands on you and then everyone hated you for saying something about it or for reporting it to the police and, you know, maybe he lost his job or his spot on the football team and then everyone hated you because everybody liked that nice guy that wouldn't be fair to you. It's not okay for a man to put his hands on you. And it wasn't okay for Chris Brown to do that to Rihanna.